All right, so let's call to order the February 6, 2024 work session of the Lower Southford Township Board of Supervisors. Please join me at the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This brings us to our first item on the agenda, which is a public comment. Period. Is there anyone wishing to be recognized? Okay, so we're, <laughs> you're good. Uh, thanks. Well, moving right along then, uh, Public Works Director, Mr. Jones. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, just an update on some projects. Street light upgrades. Uh, currently, we're still waiting for two fixtures to come in to get the final eight installed. So, hopefully, in a couple of weeks, crossing my fingers, we'll have that completed. Uh, the Public Works and Community Center facility. Uh, we've been going back and forth on a number of provisions uh, on the community center property. The idea was suggested that we split the two buildings, the library being in a separate building, and all the other uses in in another building. Um, it helps solve the grading issue that we were having were struggling with, um, and it also might provide some. Uh, some benefit for phasing the project and moving some other things along you know, from the, a global perspective on these projects. Uh, so we reviewed their, uh, the team's concept uh, a couple of weeks ago and had some concerns or some questions and suggestions. So they are uh, further revised the, that concept and are, we're meeting later this morning to do all that. Make a progress. Main Street sidewalk project coordinating with the property owners uh, for the sign relocations that Smile, Rakus, and Kent Harvest, and also working on scheduling a meeting with Smile regarding their uh, their participation in the project. Uh, Cobra Road improvements uh, working with the property owner at 2410 Old, old 40 Foot Road uh, regarding the drainage concerns and the issues with that project. So we're Working to try to work through that at this point. And if you'll recall, that's part of the grant that we received for the from the dirt and gravel low value road program through the Montgomery County Conservation District. Uh, garage rental for Republic Works and the golf course. We've come to a tentative agreement with the property owner for the rental of a four bay, approximately 4,000 square foot garage. This will be shared use between the Public Works and the golf course. For our storage needs, it's at 804 Harleysville Pike. The uh, the rental fee, monthly rental fee, is seventeen thousand one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, about seven thousand dollars. <laughs> so uh, that cost will be shared with the the golf course. So we're looking for the board's blessing on that, so that we can move forward if that's something that you're. Oh, what's the term of the lease? I haven't seen any of the details yet. They're, uh, the owner's attorney is supposedly working up an agreement. Um, that was supposed to be done last week, so I have to reach out again and just see. And it's, we're, we were hoping March, but it's going to be most likely April by the time we could even occupy. The garage is just full of things that have been collected over the years. They had a... Uh... Garage sale Did they? for the weekend. Okay. Lots of tables. So it may be dwindling. It looks like they have a long way to go, Howard. Yeah, I guess they, they have entertained having an auctioneer come in and, and but didn't want to pay the fee. The fee. <clears throat> but the problem with something like that is that everything's got sentimental value to someone. Or that, you know, it's all attached to a memory. And it's difficult to say, yeah, in the dumpster. Is, it, is the building separately metered from the house? They're going to work on that as well. Okay. It's having a, a separate meter for for the lecture. Got it. I feel like you think this is the best news to go or the most you know, helpful, then I don't really have a problem with it. But that said, I still want to take a look at the you know, once the fine prints are in the call. Yeah. Right? I would say that's possible. Well, it is how, like, are they defining an area of the property along with the garage? Like, you know, obviously the access comes off of the one side. Is it, are they through and through garages? I'm yes, trying to remember. So we obviously don't have full fledged access to the property. No. So is it like a defined area yeah. that's going to be? 
they have a focused stone area. Oh, they do. I just want to make sure that along with the building, we have a defined like we're entitled to X, so that right. we don't get into some sort of like you damaged our property that wasn't in the lease. That type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since we're talking about that area right there, there's a, a drainage pipe that goes underneath Slosher Road, like right past this uh, garage. That the edge of the road is starting to come in. I don't know if you had. Yeah. To... Okay. Yeah. Wanted to make sure you're aware. Yeah. Sure. Box for salvage. Well, that project with Franconia down. Don't tell me we're going to get to use some of those. There's going to be those there. Yeah, that's the plan. We want to get that done this year. So yeah. Slide that, make it safe, and then Turning. redo the road and improve the drainage. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. I just want to make sure you're aware of it. Yep. I saw it this morning. Yeah, that's been on the radar for, for a couple of years trying to, <laughs> trying to find a use for these uh, these old box culverts. One, one area, the other area is the uh, Indian Creek Road, just okay. past Freeman School. Yeah, we've got a, a culvert that runs under the road there. That's you know way too small. Yeah. And that area always floods. So, uh, yeah, we're we're trying to find spots, find homes for these things. But they've been good. sitting in the stone yard for <laughs> probably a decade at least. Or at least, make sure concrete. So, <laughs> uh, contracts on your uh, agenda. There's uh, authorization to advertise two contracts. 2024 bake repair contract and the 2024 pavement markings contract versus a joint contract with Franconia Township. Uh, we also received a letter from Earth Res regarding the Harleysville Quarry, Harleysville Material, and their application to renew their uh, air quality permit through the state. So I'm looking into the details on that. I'm, can't imagine there's much change in that, but uh, we'll be into that as well. So I have a comment on that, on the quarry. I, I have a couple of trucks going in there right now, and their wash station, I mean, you're supposed to wash the tire wash, they said it's basically just pumping mud right now. It makes the truck dirtier. Really? Yeah, and I don't know if there's any way. I think that water is supposed to be reused. Like they reuse it before they, whatever they do, dump it down in the quarry or whatever, but it, it <clears throat> you ought to see the trucks coming in there. It's horrible. It's basically pumping mud on the side of the trucks to wash the trucks. Is it recently or yeah, yeah, it was yesterday. yesterday. So a couple weeks ago there was when we had some of those rain events, so it was pretty muddy. It down from the wash station. Like, it was really bad. They told me that they had they had an incident where a truck ran into the, in the wash station and damaged it, so they were trying to get it repaired. Okay. So they, they kind of blamed it on that. Still a violation. Um, Still a violation of washing the trucks. Well, they technically they are, but they're washing them with mud. <laughs> like, you know, so I, I don't know. You I'm, know, I'm glad you said was, uh, Yeah. Um, I was going to say, you know, separately too, I noticed, and it was within the last week, just uh, I guess up near Meeting House Garage, just the fading of the, the yellow line alone due to the dirt that I'm driving through and I saw two cars just completely over the line. I didn't, but they sort of back over. But yeah, that was something that I wanted to comment on since you brought it up as well. It's, it, well it looks pretty terrible. So we're on that subject, yeah. we just received a grant, an Arley grant to do the bike lanes and incorporated with that <laughs> uh, raised pavement markings and you know thermoplastic markings on the D3 road, that, the quarry stretch. Where yeah. and the problem with is, is is all the dirt and all the sweeping. Yeah, you know, the traditional paint painted pavement markings just don't last. Why we're incorporating that into this uh in this Arley Grant project. So we're hoping that gets done, should get done this year. The question then becomes do, you know, rather than putting the raised pavement markings in and then three years later do a resurfacing. So we're looking at moving that that road up on the resurfacing schedule to this year to get it done. We've got a couple of options we could even we could do through uh, the Nova chip. Through our contract with AMS, or we have an equipment rental contract through SACS, where we would buy the material and they would install it to do a traditional hot mix overlay. So we're looking at those options at this point to uh, uh, to, to take care of the road, and then also then get the all the raised pavement markings installed and all the you know, the new thermoplastic markings, so that we won't shouldn't have that issue moving forward uh, with the, the you know the lines disappearing. Because yeah, it's around the, each of the bends, especially in front of the quarry. There's you know the, the markings are all gone. 
that way we talk. So, uh, grants. Uh, received the scoping forms back from PennDOT on the Green Light Go. This is for the traffic signal upgrades, main in Maple and main in Huntsberger. They indicated no preference for which which uh, project, so we're going to submit applications for both. See what happens. Good. Good. Um, like I said, the early grant we received a little over eighty six thousand dollars for bike lanes, striping, signage, and the raised pavement markings. Uh, we're also looking into the, the COVID ARPA Community Facilities Grant. It's a new program uh, for the community center project. One of the challenges that we're going to face with that is making the connection with well, one of the requirements is that it's got to be a direct impact from COVID. And, you know, the the project has to be a result of, the, of COVID. So... You know, we, we attended a couple of webinars. Well, it's it's all ARPA money and it's all COVID related. So they're they're making those those distinctions in the uh, qualifications for the for the projects. Um, but we attended a couple of webinars and you know there were a lot of people online, you know, throwing out suggestions about you know different projects and you look at those and a new room, you know, ADA improvements, you know, those kinds of things. I think everybody, because it's a new program, they're going to have to wade through a lot of stuff that, you know, people are really stretching to make a connection and everybody's going to try and, you know, spin their projects a little bit to, to see if they can, uh, you know, make those connections to, to satisfy those requirements of the grant. So we're going to look to do the same thing and see if we can uh, uh, find a couple of angles to, to make, make the connections on, on our project as well. Um, just some department activities, doing a lot of tree work, got a lot of site distance issues. Some of it's on uh, on state roads and thank you, Tom and your staff for the assistance. It's it's amazing that, you know, we set up the traffic controls, the work zones, and, you know, people just come so accustomed and don't even pay attention. Put a police car there with the, the red and the blue lights and everybody slows down to half the speed that they were traveling, so. Uh, we appreciate the assistance. It, it really makes for a safer environment for, for my guys to, to work in. Uh, uh, did some tree work at, at Roth Park to make room for a new fence there. Also looking at uh, creating additional like five parking spots there. Yeah, basically back up to the Harleysville Hotel, that, that portion of it, because they use the parking, they use the grass anyway to park. So... And what's happening is that with the old post and rail fence, it was so close to the parking lot, even though we have parking bumpers, when trucks back in, they're not hitting the parking bumpers or hitting the fence. So we're moving the fence back and then going to install uh, you know, parking spaces there. So um, otherwise, just doing a lot of sign work, trying to get caught up on all that uh, stuff. So that's about it for my update. So, and, uh, I wanted to thank you again for uh, getting back to me so quick about that uh, store road tree that fell. Oh. Because <laughs> I had a lot of people calling me like, what's going on? Why is it sit? So thank you. Yeah, that was a little bit of a, a mess because Pico was out there on Friday right after it happened and yeah. restored power. And then they came back out on Monday and I was talking to the guy, but they never reinstalled the neutral line on the between the poles or anything. So yeah. He said, you know, he was scratching his head as to wondering what was going on there. But um, we made it safe. It was safe for us to go in with the tree. So we were the tree and allowed everybody to get in there and do their work. So, so that's, that's all that I have. Thank you. Happy to answer any questions. I have any questions? Just a comment, though. To thank you again to you and your crew. I know I'm sure everybody shares the sentiments this weather, you know, keeping the roads safe and uh, it's been a little bit since we had uh, that much work, but did a great job, and everybody does a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, brief there. Um, I mentioned last work session that we had some uh, miscellaneous buyers that will offer put our vehicles. Uh, and they are up on the uh, They're going to be up for a couple more weeks. Uh, it's, uh, Monday the 19th. We'll close out in time for our next work session. Uh, on the personnel side, we still have one officer on modified duty from a non work related uh, shoulder repair. Uh, 
later this week, uh, we'll get a uh, primary decision whether he has to go and turn a full duty. And if he does, then we can get our second traffic officer back to a regular rotation. So I have. Thank you. Any questions for the chief? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next up, Mr. Buki. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this month, or sorry, last month, we had one permit that we do, which is pretty on par for a January. It's your upcoming meeting tomorrow. You'll be looking at the RO residential office district's ordinance amendments for consideration to adopt. Also, you'll be looking at the sign ordinance amendments with which primarily address the furry signage in the township. And so that would be a authorization to advertise. The upcoming planning commission meeting that we're going to be having in um, February 28th, we'll be looking at a uh, local letter on feasibility study. So we're nearing the end of that process. So they have a draft report they're going to be presenting to the, um, to you and to the planning commission. So the planning commission. We also have 196 Main Street coming up because they submitted a revised conditional use plan for the for the bank and the retail markets all to get one. That would be the, the conditional use application that's that's on the agenda today. And since it's the winter, we're able to take a look at other ordinance amendments. So we're bringing back dusting off the Stormwater Management Ordinance that we're taking a look at. Um, that one is regarding the, the maximum allowable stormwater, I'm sorry, the maximum required stormwater management that is required for developers when they're doing subdivision plan developments. Right now, it's not 100% of the impervious surface would be allowed on the property. It's, it, it, Actually, I, I don't think it's necessarily defined. And so we're clarifying the ordinance to require that the developer do the stormwater management for 100% of the impervious surface that would be proposed, even if they're not proposing 100%. So we're clarifying that. Also, a park ordinance amendment and the wireless communication facilities ordinance amendments. Uh, so just cleaning up those ordinances. So, so we'll put those in front of you. There is no zoning hearing board application for this one. That's all I have. Terrific. Any, any questions for Mike? <laughs> I'm just, oh, go ahead, sir. Just one question on the sign board. I was looking it over, and uh, I'll show you guys as well. Section 3, part 15, the sign that it Vivid statements, words, pictures of a scene, a scene or pornographic subject as determined by Lowell Southwark Township. I was just curious what the county model has. Because for me, you know, and I know we've discussed this before, like one what thing. Section three, which? Uh, 15. For me, I, I just don't know what would determine something of scene. Because I mean, when it comes to freedom of speech, one person's obscenity might be somebody else. Is Harry Block? Yeah, I don't know. I was curious about the model. Yeah. Is, but I'm part of the reason why we're getting rid of political science because that is freedom of expression. People can express different things. I have no problem somebody putting up something, whether I agree with it or not. I can regulate, we can regulate maybe the height, the size, but it just, it just seems really fine line of who's going to determine, oh, I don't like that statement. And obviously, some things I would find seen with majority of people, but I was just curious what the model has for that. What anybody saw in that might be that could put us in an interesting situation. We have Sister Mary Catherine in the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, a, a board of three religious leaders. And uh, no, it's a very good question. Anything contentious that or questionable, it, it won't, if the decision won't come from me, because if it is a question situation, I don't run out there and pull the sign for issue of violation. I consult that. So I, I'll look at the office, put it in for interpretation. But that, I, I appreciate that answer. I can probably go along with, you know, with Kevin, though. 
it does it gets a slippery slope with regards to um what you, what you said what you allow what you allow what you don't allow and um yeah that's a uh that's a tough one it's it's interesting and like i said there might be if i see something my neighbor might have that i might find offensive you know right. i could talk to my kids about it but that gives them me the right to put something up as and well it's so like it's, it, it, that language comes out of the county model correct? that's why i was curious where it came from because yeah. it's that so it's a county model to just write that and then fill in the municipality yeah. and said municipality yeah. right so what I, I guess I'm I'm tr I'm struggling with what's the consternation with 15 signs that exhibit statements, words, or pictures of obscene or pornographic subjects as determined by the Lord's of that. What pornographic is probably fairly. Uh, I would think seen maybe obscene. less so. Okay, depending on what you consider obscene and words. what shocks your conscience versus mine. Right, but it's it's not not necessarily doesn't it it seem something more that's that I have controversial. What do you say? I, it doesn't say things that are controversial. It just says obscene or pornographic. So uh, to me, that language is pretty clear, pretty clear. But I guess you're suggesting that there may be a gray area there. I, I, I'm not seeing the gray. I was just wanted to have a discussion again. I'm not sure if that would lead to a gray area. Because again, it's it's a matter of opinions in certain ways. I don't know. I'm not sure that it is. But well, if, if, if someone had a uh, sign in their front yard that said the F word Trump, right? Would that meet the definition of obscene as uh, determined by our township staff? Uh, so you'd have to, that's, uh, and Mike's point's well taken, right? You would take that to the solicitor and determine whether that's something we're gonna pursue. And to the extent that we are, then, you know, be back to Mike to write a violation or what have you. So I don't, I, I mean, it, this comes down to enforcement. Yeah, exactly. And it allows, it allows for just that conversation to occur. Where oh, so what's the alternative? We're going to take this out, okay? And you have to list everything that you would right. So that I see your point. It's troubling. You do regulate that, bro. That's the 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 troubling side is any freedom of expression discussion has exactly this this merit to it of how far do you go one way or the other to protect the the public over the. I think you're con maybe conflating the two, right? Freedom of expression and something that's obscene or pornographic. These are two very specific. Pornographic, I, obscene is where I think I'm more uh, concerned. Statements about. in the words too that could be different. Yeah. I mean, in the past we had a signage that I know there was, you know, people were upset about it. A lot of people actually literally said to me, "You guys know we've made a paper. And we made a statement. People said, well, I, you know, don't you want to take it down?'" I said, no, whether I agree with it or not. Right, it's neither, it was so, neither obscene nor pornographic. Okay, that would be determined. Though. I guess we're. In, I see what you're saying. It, I, it's just a. Uh, it can be a slippery slope, yeah. though, where I think we are a group of reasonably minded people sitting on this board and with this current staff. That is not always the same group that may possibly sit here. True, but well, you're still stuck with obscene or pornographic. It doesn't say objectionable. It doesn't say. You know, right. we don't like it. You know, there's well, all that's taken yeah. out. I, I, I personally am fine with that language, but you know, if you if you folks feel there's a gray there, then you know, maybe maybe there's maybe you take out obscene. I don't. I, Mike, did the solicitors review the right. That's correct. Yeah, and that's why I was just curious. What the I did read the yeah. I know we talked about the county. Well, well, you're in. Well, I'm not going to we can make a determination. Right. right on a case by case basis. Yeah. Well, I think you can't list, list everything. Somebody no, I agree with you. Can't it. list it. It's just be. Right. It's you know, yeah. They're trying to cover all bases, so it is, and then we'll figure it out from there. Bases covered. I mean, until some other, you know, legal precedents, sure. yeah. you know, right. move comes along. I just right. want to get doesn't feel uncomfortable with that base current legal precedent, right? But again, if this kind of issue came up, we would be consulting the solicitor. <laughs> so I would hopefully we find out the latest. And, and to be frank, I couldn't think of any better than like itself. That's why I was curious if there was something else or if we have a discussion or do we take it out altogether? It's it's a fine one. I agree where it comes, but even with the images, it's it's hard to say. Like obviously, I think we're all in agreement what pornographic would be, but again, you don't want to tell someone you, you know, it's it's tough. Words and statements, though, it's, it's harder.
Well, the good news is tomorrow night we're going to authorize that. <laughs> Like it's input insight. Right. Well, unfortunately, the definition of obscene doesn't give you a whole lot more direction okay. because it's offensive or disgusting by accepted standards of morality and decency. That changes obviously it's over time. <laughs> it's always moral. And exactly, exactly. So, all right. Any anything else for uh, the sign ordinance or Michael? All right, moving right along, Mr. Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item on the manager's report is review January 2nd, 2024. Reorganization meeting minutes. But have any questions, concerns, or changes? Wondering if I could add my statement that I had last time, just prepared to adapt it. Okay, with the board. That's the past. I can email it to you at home for now if you'd like to see it again. That wasn't for that meeting. Was that the reorg? That was the reorg. Oh, no, it was. We did do everything at one time, didn't we? Seems so long ago. I think it's kind of high. That's that's all I got. Right. Next item is the review of the agenda for tomorrow evening. Um, Can you ask a quick question? Did that get done as in the minutes you note his statement is attached, or do you actually feed the statement directly into? We usually attach it. Okay, perfect. perfect. That's perfect. Right. We've been statement attached, then we'll attach it. Perfect. Yeah, since I've been here, it's been other statements. No, no, that's fine. I just wanted to, I didn't, didn't remember how he did it if it got inserted right. in the body or the. Very good. No worries. I. Um, Unfinished business as uh, Mr. Buki reviewed the ordinance 202401 residential office district amendment is on the board's consideration to adopt the new business ordinance 202402 signed ordinance amendment, you, which was yes, yeah. question specific 202402. On the minutes, we have 202 resolution amending establishing the I just wanted to make sure we have the correct resolution numbers. On the agenda. What's that? In our previous minutes, we have 202402 as resolution amending and establishing the fee for certain services. This is for an ordinance. Just one oh, resolution. Yeah, that's all that now. Okay. Okay. I'm making yeah. sure. Thank you. Continue. Uh, so the resolution of the so, side ordinance amendment authorization to advertise that the ordinance 202402, uh, resolution 202404, adopting the sewage facilities plan revision. This is uh, Put forth by the uh, authority, uh, a revision to the Act 537 plan uh, has been reviewed by the Planning Commission, and they're looking for for what for what area? Uh, Just for the pump station work, or what? I believe I believe so. Yes. You know, Dave, and so people added they put to the revision where they're happy to add it. It's very very interesting. Okay, I knew you guys were doing some more master planning with yeah. that. Resolution 2024-05 authorizing the commission of a grant application for the 2024 round of the Bonco 2040 and taking grant program. This would be for the Yoda Road sidewalk project. Uh, as Mr. Jones previously discussed, the 2024 by two minutes pavement repair, base repair contract authorization to advertise 2024 pavement market contract uh, with Franconia Township, also authorization to advertise. Uh, just to speak of sewage facilities planning, we heard anything more on the one for um uh, thank you. No, thank you. Haven't heard back from that, have we? No. Good. That's all I have. Um quick question also. Obviously, Doug had mentioned a number of grants for going after more, and I know we had put in the budget for additional staffing, uh, special products coordinator, yeah. I think you're calling it. How's sure. that process? Doug, Holly and I would be sitting down, going through a, a job description, and then getting that out. That would be very helpful, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they seem to pile up. <laughs> well, it's lots of good works to do. It's just a matter of the amount of time in a given day to get there. Yeah, true. Anything else for, uh, for Joe? Do we have... Need for executive session to not. 
Very good. Any other uh, public comment? Nothing today. All right. Well, I guess that would uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Hold so, up. Okay.